So welcome to our next exciting uh, virtual bridge session. This time we're joined by Lewis Ross from City of Glasgow College, who's going to tell us everything and all we wanted to know about Google Science. Yes, indeed. Um, so um, basically, I think the, the best way of demonstrating Google Sites is just to build one from scratch because it kind of shows you how easy it is. And then I'll show you some of the applications I've used it for. Uh, I tend to use it for outside projects that we have because it's a really easy way. We can basically create a Google account for the project, build the site in it, and then hand the account details over to whoever we're working with. Um, so it's quite an easy way of passing it on and stuff. Um, we have built some before using a G Suite for a very special project that required an entire G Suite for it. Uh, it. The one thing to bear in mind if you're using G Suites for it, if you create a Google site in a G Suite, you can't get it outside that G Suite. So you can't pass it on to a, a private owner afterwards. Uh, you've got to build it in um, the, the space that you expect it to, to reside in. With a private Google site, you can pass it between ownerships. So that's just something to bear in mind. Right, I'm going to start my screen share and then hope I've uh, closed everything that's embarrassing. Yes, it's fine. Um, no death metal lying open. Okay, so here we are in my drive, which is, this is actually within our G Suite at the City of Glasgow College, which we use, um, it was basically used for a trial, but I've still got access to it. So what I'm gonna do, just in my drive, I just click anywhere, I can hit new, more, and then we can just hit Google Sites. And that's us now created a site effectively. Um, and I'm gonna crowdsource from everyone here. What would you like to make me, what would you like me to make a site about? Any suggestions, the wackier the better. Anything anyone wants to see? Glaswegian death metal then. <laughs> Glaswegian death metal. Okay, right, here we go. Uh, so we're gonna give itself a title. So Glas, oh, I need to move my mic so I can actually type. Here we go. So, Glaswegian Death Metal. Um, I used to host a radio show on Subcity Radio, um, Glasgow University student radio station, all about black metal, death metal, and grindcore. So, this is very much my wheelhouse. <laughs> so, we've got a title, and then we can kind of um, pick a background image for it as well. So, we just click on our change image here, and we can either upload our images or we can select. What's really good with Google Sites, which I haven't used this too much because most of the things I've been doing have been quite specialist where I need to source images in specific ways. But if we just go to the search and we type in here, it will find us any um, openly licensed images that we can just use in our website. So things, uh, I think it's anything that's either public domain or it might be CC by, I can't remember exactly how it does it. So if we just go with uh, death metal, and then hope every image we get is appropriate. We'll see. Um, it allows us to do a few things. So we can choose what type of image we want, what color palette we're going for on our website. So let's go, this is pretty death metal. That's brilliant. Okay, so we've got a really dark tree. Now you'll notice not very readable, but down here is some magic is happening and it will automatically adjust the text and the image to make it readable on the um, surface we've chosen. So we can just turn that on and off make it completely unreadable, like most death metal logos, or we can leave it like that. We also then get uh, to choose what type of header type we want. We can have it just title only, or we can have cover, which is one that I quite like because it looks quite artistic. So we just got a big cover image, or we can have different banner sizes. And it just dynamically resizes for us instantly. Really, really easy. Um, so we've got that. Now we probably want our starting page. So let's add some text. Hi, welcome to my death metal page. Um, so we can just add in text boxes like that. We've just got our options here, text boxes, images. We can embed stuff as well, or we can pull things directly from our drive. And with all these things, we can kind of drag them around. So if we want to add another text box, text, we can then quickly move these around like such. But there's also some really nice little templates here. So say we want to have a nice image with some text next to it. We can just hit this template, boom, it comes in and we can just edit this in here. So maybe we wanna add uh, a photo here. We could add a file from our drive. So I'll just show you how that works. It just pops up, shows us our drive and then we can pick something. This is a pretty death metal image actually, so I'll use this. Um, 
So we can just insert things like that. Then we have options where we can drag it around. Here we go. That's, uh, I can't remember why I've got this in my work drive, but there is a World War I cavalryman with a gas mask on. Um, and then we just add our titles in and text. So death metal. Um, anytime we've got text selected, we can choose what type of um, size we want it by using standard headings. The, the one thing with Google Sites is you don't have that fine grain control. Um, so if you're used to building websites just with straight HTML, you're not going to be go, able to go in there and start editing tags and uh, applying attributes and stuff like that. You're kind of locked down to what your options are here, which is kind of bold, you know, kind of align, add in links, this style stuff. Uh, but we can have subtitles, these things kind of chunk together in little clips. Uh, this is the best genre. Um, and these kind of units kind of stick together. So we can see that our um, title and subtitle kind of stick as one unit, and then we can move that around the page. Just undo that. Or our entire block here, we can move that up and down. So it's, it's quite intelligent with how it decides where things will sit. We'll just get rid of that one. And then you can kind of like uh, click them on to each other almost effectively. So if I kind of try and blump that on there, see how it clicks together as one unit. So then it, it's, it's quite nice if you're just wanting to make quick, big, gross changes to your layout, your site, just grab your things, move them around. There's also one other really nice feature. So if I go to themes, you can see at the moment we've got this kind of simple theme, but what if we want to actually make this a bit more artistic? So let's go with our diplomat theme. You'll see it instantly changes our fonts and um, our kind of bordering around our things. Um, and then we can also choose colors as well. So if we put our color theme on, we can then start applying these color themes. And that also applies to our backgrounds. So if we've got a, a block here, I don't know what the official Google terminology for this is, I just call them blocks. Um, we can select the background emphasis on that. So we can put a kind of gray on it. We can put a color or we can actually also choose images so we can have image backgrounds and then layer text over them. So you can get quite, quite advanced with it. Uh, I think we're gonna go with a, a black theme because we're talking about death metal in this website. So pre pretty simple to kind of quickly make changes. So if, if someone says, oh, that, it does, that website doesn't pop enough, which is the feedback every designer loves getting, can you make it pop more? Well, oh, there we go. Look, there, it pops now, brilliant, yay. Um, but we'll go back to our simple theme in black because that's the one I like. Um, so there we go. We've got a front page. It's clearly awesome. We don't really need to do anything more with that. If we want to insert more pages. We can just go to our pages tab and then we can start slapping in some new ones. So um, let's call this one bands. Here we go. So you'll now see it's building our menu at the top here as well. Um, I just need to give this a metal site name and then we can quickly move between our different things by default it will apply the same banner image to the previous one you used um, so it'll keep this this banner but we can always change that out to like a different image with our image selections here we can also add sub pages so if I add a sub page so maybe from our home we wanted an about me page It'll then add a sub page and you'll see now we've got a drop down and it's building our navigation bar for us. Basically, it's really nice. <clears throat> but we do have some options with that as well. So if I mouse over here, here's our navigation menu. We can choose, do we want it on the side? So if we move that over there, we can see now we have your classic hamburger menu. Um, not everyone knows that's called a hamburger. That's what that, that button is called because it looks like a hamburger. Um, and then we've got that kind of style of menu there. Um, we can also do things, if I move it to the top again, we can change, do we want maybe to have an overlay, a white or a black? And these colors will follow the theme that we picked on our themes as well. So white and black here, that was our choices. We'll go with white. Um, so if I'll just show you that as well. So if I change my theme color, oh, it's not changed it there. Oh, I think this is because the style I'm using, but usually you can kind of theme them to your thing as well. 
So it, it's it's really nice in the, in the, the way it kind of applies these themes and stuff. So even if you're like completely amateur, have no web design skills at all, you can get a really nice looking website really easily. Um, my 70 year old dad uh, recently used this to build a website for his local archaeology group, which I was searching for this morning, but I can't find the email where he sent me the link. So I can't show you it, sadly. But if you're interested in Neolithic Deicide, that's where you can get some information. If you Google that, I'll try and find it at some point. But yeah, he's he managed to make a really nice website and he's had literally no web design experience before. So it's nice and easy. Other kind of things that we can add on. We've got a whole list of options down here. So we can put in collapsible text. You can get it to automatically add in a table of contents, image carousels, buttons, kind of a lot of the usual things you'd uh, like expect. Also, what's really nice is it supports uh, YouTube embeds really easily and natively. So if we click that button, we can either go to uploads, which will go to videos we've uploaded to our channel. I've got none on this particular account. Or we can do a quick search. So let's go for um, the classic death um, metal band called Death. So let's see. Uh, that's not found us any. So Death Band. Uh, here we go. Here's an audio clip from their album, Spiritual Healing. So bam, there, we've inserted a YouTube video really easily and quickly. And you'll see when I drag this around, it'll automatically try and show us where it is centered and space things for us really nicely. Um, and we can kind of, if we adjust this in size, it'll then dynamically show us which size. You'll notice as well when I'm adjusting, it's got these kind of dividers. So it's showing you there the big spaces are what things will snap to and the, the kind of little spaces are your padding. So it'll automatically set padding between stuff. So you can't just ram it full of stuff and completely cover the screen without any spacing. It'll, it'll kind of force that on you. Um, it does mean that if you're, again, used to doing all your own HTML and stuff like that and CSS, um, you don't have that fine level of control of the way things sit. But it's, it's usually quite clever with how it kind of automatically puts the stuff in. Um, what's also nice is because it's Google, if you've built a lot of your stuff in docs or slides or anything like that, you can automatically insert them into the site already. So if you've got slide deck that you're wanting to show people, let's just go to slides. Um, here we go. This was, let's go using a Moodle assignment Dropbox. Here we go. Um, it'll automatically embed those slides into the website. So just so I can show you how this dynamically works, let's put that there and chunk. There we go, it fits into the space. This is terrible layout, don't do this, <laughs> by the way. For any things you're seeing here from my layout skills, please ignore all this, this is me doing it quickly. So we've kind of added stuff in um, and then we can quickly just go to preview and it'll show us here the page that we're on. So here we go, we've got bands, we've got a thing and got our slides. We can see we can step through the slides here. We've got a button where we can pop it out into a bigger, um, bigger window. Um, but what's also nice is that it will dynamically alter everything based upon screen size. So you can see down here, I've got my large screen, so my PC basically. Um, I can also move it to a tablet form and you'll see it then resizes things. Or if I go to a, a phone, you'll see it then automatically knocks things down into the next row. So it'll fit on a phone screen. So um, if you've got no experience of doing dynamic design for different uh, sizes of a monitor and stuff, it does it all for you, which I can't say how useful that is because a lot of people, they'll kind of end up going for, you know, um, a WordPress site and stuff like that, which has some nice dynamic things, but people can get up in a mess if they're trying to design content for a phone. Um, this will do it automatically for you, uh, which is really good, especially in current circumstances where a lot of people, their only internet access at the moment is a phone. So this, this will kind of sort that out for you. Uh, anything else I want to particularly cover about it? Apart from that, it's mainly just adding things in and then playing with your, your kind of emphasis and backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, is the kind of the majority of it. So it's a really easy, just kind of like drag and drop style interface. And then when you're ready to publish, you can just publish it. Um, by default, it will create uh, URLs for you that, so this is on our 
G Suite. So this is why it's got this kind of big, long, complicated URL. Usually, excuse me one second. Usually it will just be sites.google.com slash name of your website. So in this case, death metal, which I suspect has already been taken. So if I try and do that, it wouldn't work on normal Google sites. But you can also um, add in your own custom URLs. So if you've purchased a URL, there's a process you can go through uh, to verify your ownership of that URL and then apply it to your site, um, which depending on who you bought your uh, domain from, uh, can be either very easy or a bit of rigmarole, as I found out while trying to do it with uh, 123 Reg 1, which took me quite a few tries. But it is all doable if you've got your own custom URLs. But if you don't care that much about having a super fancy URL, you can just stick with that sites.google.com slash whatever it is you're doing. Um, yeah. Any questions about the actual design process before I move on to show people how I've used it for some actual projects? Before I move on, anyone got any questions? A quick one from me there. Um, yeah. so any assistance with accessibility considerations, given that uh, this tool can be used to produce something which is pretty ghastly in accessibility terms? <laughs> um, yeah, so with, with um, any kind of YouTube stuff that you embed, you'll, you're pretty covered because YouTube does automatic uh, subtitling. So you're good on that one. Uh, with slides, slides actually has some good accessibility stuff. So if they open it into the, oh, I'm not in preview. If you open it into your large screen, you'll have access to the usual uh, slides accessibility features. So you can kind of like, you know, close captions and notes and all these kind of things that are usually there. For the standard kind of, um, oops, let me just exit out and go to where I've actually inserted a picture. For your standard kind of uh, images and stuff, um, you can go in and you can add alt text and captions and stuff like that. It won't by default um, prompt you to do this. So it's something that you have to be aware of and go in and do yourself. I completely forgot to cover that. So that was my bad. Um, so yeah, whenever you're entering an image like that, you can go in. It does have the option to, this is a decorative image. And what that will do is it'll tag it so the screen reader will ignore it. So if it's just a purely like background image, no, no relevance to anything you're doing, you're just putting it there to look fancy, um, which generally is a bad use of images, but you know, it happens. You can tag that and the screen reader will ignore it. Um, I've not done extensive accessibility testing with it, I must say, because accessibility is not particularly one of my specialities. Um, but one of my colleagues um, who I used to work with who was an accessibility specialist used it to build some of her own um, websites and she, she was quite happy with it for accessibility wise. So it does seem to work well. But again, it is, as you said, it's down to the designer to make, to make sure that they're not putting tons of text in there and horrible things that are going to get in the way. But it does have your kind of your standard, yeah, alt texts and stuff like that um, are quite good. Thank you. Um, yeah. And it does, because of the way it structures things, if you're structuring properly with titles, headings, the screen readers will read that with the hierarchy that they usually would of, you know, your H1s, H2s, uh, and reading down those hierarchies. But as long as you don't go around turning everything into a title instead of a heading, um, you should be fine. <laughs> but yeah. Bear in mind when you're designing. Uh, any other quick questions? Oh, they don't have to be quick. They could be a long question. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that when in the private Google sites now, do he have a set of templates for kind of pre-built websites as well? So you yes. can have portfolios and things? Was that yeah. Right? So if I go to sites, uh, uh, let me just get rid of that. Um, there, when you're, uh, that's the old version of sites. Give me one second, sites home. This is something to be aware of actually. Um, what I've luckily brought that up by mistake. There's two versions of sites. There's old sites, which is the one most people are familiar with, which is kind of horrible and I don't recommend using. And then there's new sites, which is this one. Uh, and yeah, you, you want to use new Google sites because that's all, got all the good features. The old one's still a bit clunky and a bit kind of web 1.0-ish. Uh, but yeah, as you said, Kenji, there's templates here and there's this whole gallery here. Um, and that will just really quickly give you your skeleton that you can then build stuff on. So say we want to build a club. We just click this one. And we give it a second. And then it'll load up. And it'll have our pre-built website. So here you can see it's got prompts to put in stuff, 
prompts to put in videos and, and things. Here's it's added some buttons because there's also a footer that you can add in and it's added things in there for us to edit. So you can really quickly build a website just by going in and editing what's there. So it's really great if you've got no experience at all um, for, for building something really quickly. Uh, yeah, cheers for pointing that out, Kenji. Um, right, let me just quickly go back into my garbage pile of a website. Um, any other questions on the design process? So it's all pretty straightforward. And if you've used something like Wix or whatever like that before, um, it's very similar. I think the advantage of this over something like Wix, sorry, you're getting all the pop-ups from my teams you might be seeing telling me that I'm meant to be in a different meeting. Um, if you've used something like Wix before, um, the advantage of Google Sites is that it sits in that Google economy. So it's really easy for you to add stuff in from your Google Drive. So using your slides, docs that you've built already. So if you're kind of embedded in that already, it, it makes sense to use a platform like this. Also, if you're in a G Suite, um, you can publish your sites so that only people within your G Suite can see it. So that's really useful if you've got some like semi-sensitive information that should only be shared within your institution. If you have a G Suite, you can share it just with them or you can choose it to share publicly with everyone. You can also make sites private where only people who you've invited to uh, look at it via, via, via email can look at it as well. So you can do that. Um, although if you're doing that, why are you building a website would be my question, but you know, it's, a, it's an option that's there. Um, right, so what I'll show you now is I'm gonna whoosh this window off my screen, woof, and then come in with a wham, exciting window. Um, that is what um, of the projects that I've been working on recently. So this is all built with Google Sites. It's for uh, a project run by Construction uh, Scotland Innovation Centre and uh, Glasgow, uh, not Glasgow, Edinburgh uh, Napier with help from us from City of Glasgow College. Uh, I did all the website building for it. They made all the learning materials. Their learning materials are excellent. I'll show you them in a second because you might be interested in them. Um, but so it's this collaborative project where they wanted a website built and they also wanted to be able to host the learning materials and have a way of delivering them to people from any institution throughout um, the UK or even internationally. So your traditional methods of doing that would be maybe putting it in a VLE and having like an open VLE or storing the, the document somewhere. Maybe you'd have to pay for some hosting space, something like that. Uh, instead, what we did was we, we created a Google account. We host all of the uh, learning materials here in a Google Drive. Here's some of them there. Um, and then we embed them in the Google site. And because we have the share link on Google Drive open, people can get in and download them. Um, and then all the, the website sits on that Google Drive as well. So when we're done with the project, we basically go to them. Here you go. Here's the login details. Um, it's all yours now. Do whatever you want with it. Um, so it's quite a nice, easy way of passing it over and also making it open. Um, so uh, here you can see my, my lovely front page with this good logo. One of the other things that I didn't point out is you can also put banners on the top of the screen. So if you want to put a temporary thing in here, so for example, um, saying we've got an event coming up, uh, it'll prompt people and they go straight to the page. Um, and then you can kind of build things like this where you've got nice color strips. Here's some of the videos that they made for the project. I'll quickly show you this. I don't know if you're hearing the audio, I had problem with Zoom not playing the audio before. Um, but so they made some really professional looking quality videos and they've kind of got this uniform clean look, which is what we tried to replicate on the website. Um, and again, we can have lovely things like having buttons that will take us out to register for our events. And the training materials are then hosted on the site uh, where we've got direct access to them. And then I've created download links. Um, one thing, so you can easily, if you've got share links for things like your um, Google Slides, um, this is a tip people might not know. If you, if I just grab this copy link address and I'll show you what it looks like. If you change the end of the link to export slash PowerPoint X, you can get it to automatically download the thing when people cl click the link. Similarly with PDFs, there's this very good website here um, called Google Direct, uh, Drive Direct Link Generator, where you can paste in the link of any um, file that you have on your drive that's like a non-Google file, like a PDF, and it will give you a link that will then 
when people click it, it'll automatically download it. So that's how I've set this up. So when people click on this booklet download link, it should. Just thinking about it. It will eventually, let's just leave it there to do its thing. Um, it will eventually download the PDF. I don't know why that's being slow. Maybe I need to check that link. There we go, it's downloaded it. Um, so I then kind of structured this with, you know, putting the things in here. So it's got the kind of mini ones so people can preview it or they can open it up to see the big thing. I know scroll bars within scroll bars is not the best, but you've got to make some compromises with these designs. Um, that's kind of just part of using Google sites is that you're not going to be able to do exactly as you would on a, a fully customizable website. Um, yeah. So we've then kind of embedded lots of things, lots of videos, nice, nice stuff. And then kind of, have separate resources. And as it's Google, it has a built-in search. So say if we wanted to find out about logistics, it will automatically search our website and then we can find things on there. So, oh, there's our logistics page. Um, so that's quite a nice little built-in feature. You don't have to do any kind of fancy web searching stuff. Um, yeah, and we've used this for a few other projects. So we built a similar thing for uh, National Manufacturing Institute Scotland where that actually had its own uh, G Suite created for it because um, that we were having ambassadors and getting them to sign up for accounts so they could share stuff using Google Drive in a, uh, a more secure way without having to share it publicly. They could share it just with each other uh, within the, the community that they were creating. Um, so that's how that one worked. Um, but yeah, this one is, it's all about offsite construction. So if you're interested in that in any way, I really recommend going have a look at this all the resources are free to use. They're really professionally done, like amazing knowledge and stuff from them. Um, yeah, re really, really cool project that we got to work with there. Um, still ongoing as well. So there's still more materials coming up. And th the other nice thing about sites is it's so quick and easy to edit them. Like if I wanted to add some new materials on, um, I can just go into my site. So here we are. This is the actual live website. I can just then, you know, dump in a new image, oh, whoops, a new image, for example. So I could select one from wherever. House. Um, insert, and then I just hit the publish button and then that goes live. It's really, really quick and easy. Uh, I won't do that because I don't want to break the nice website that I made for these nice people. Uh, but yeah. Um, it's also because it's Google, it's really easy to get analytics. You basically um, can set up, uh, where are we? We are in here, I think it is. Yeah, you basically just set up your analytics account, generate an ID, put it in there. That's your analytics setup. So really, really easy to get at things like that. Um, yeah, you can also set up things like brand images. That's why we've got our logo in the top corner here. So we can set up our image and then that will create your, um, can't remember the name of what, favicon. Um, so you can then put your favicon up there. So you've got that customization in the web browser. So it all looks very professional. When you kind of uh, customize these things quite a lot, um, <clears throat> it becomes less obvious they're a Google site. And I don't think people are quite used to them seeing now where people you know see a WordPress site and go, WordPress, um, <laughs> whereas Google sites, it's identifiable, but you can really mess around with it and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of my overview of Google Sites and how we used it. I don't know if anyone's got any questions about stuff because I realize we're about three minutes before we're run out of time. So I have to take any questions about Google Sites or the way I've used it or anything in general. So is there anything to worry about in terms of copyright? You're not giving Google rights to the stuff that you're doing or anything like that? No, no, they don't, they don't get any rights. It's, it's the same as... Um, with your Google Drive, they've not got copyright over the materials you're storing in there. Um, it, it's kind of all GDPR compliant because uh, Google servers are GDPR compliant. They don't own the data. Obviously, you're still liable for anything that you put on there. So if you're publishing a bunch of sensitive data, that's your fault. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, no, they don't gain, gain any rights to the materials in there. It's kind of just like you would with a Wix site or anything like that. Lewis, how about um, multiple authors on the same site? Yeah, that's, that's really easy to do as well. So in the share with other button, um, you can either do, okay, got it. Um, you can add in people here and then you can add them in as when you choose them, 
Uh, let me see if I just go. Uh, no, it's not going to detect my one. Um, if you add in people there, you can choose what rights they have. So view rights or edit rights. Those are the only two ones you get, just view or edit. Um, it doesn't have, like on most of the other Google things, you get the kind of suggestion. Um, it doesn't exist in sites. It's just either view or edit. Um, there's also like, you can, yeah, create a link directly to it there. But yeah, it's Google, so it's all about collaboration. Um, it doesn't have the kind of other Google features that some of them do of um, stare, uh, staring, uh, uh, words, saving a previous version of it so you can't roll back. So if you do give someone edit rights and they come in and delete everything, it's, you, it's not easy for you to just roll it back because um, it doesn't kind of work that way. So be wary of who you're allowing in your site as with anything. Yeah. Okay, so um, that takes us up to almost the 30 minutes for our recorded portion of this session. So um, thanks to Lewis and thanks for everyone who's taken time to, to either watch this or join us. And hopefully we'll see you back for our next exciting uh, Virtual Bridge session. Thank you very much. Cheers.